Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Audio Room, sponsored by Level Up Academy by Doc Leland. This audio room is brought to you by the five ambassadors of 50 Inspirational Connections on LinkedIn. This recording was done July 21st, 2024. This is an audio room recording and all of the participants who have said yes to having their voice disseminated throughout a hundred plus countries already and I got the written permission. Anyhow, Hello, everybody. Our topic today for this audio room is disagreement and disrespect, the difference between the two, along with collaboration bias and confirmation bias. Let's go ahead and start with disagreement and disrespect. These two different concepts are often confused but important to distinguish as business leaders. Disagreement by definition is a difference in opinions or viewpoints between individuals, their characteristics are can be respectful, involves logical reasoning and constructive dialogue. It focuses on the issues, the ideas, or the actions, but not personally attacking anyone. An example would be having a debate of political policy and discussing different approaches to a project. Although you might not agree of the same conversations or the same concepts or elements, maybe you're even one from the other, you're left or you're right, but you are respectful when you have that dialogue. A disrespectful conversation, by definition, is a lack of regard or consideration for someone's feelings, their rights, or dignity. The main characteristics is, can occur without disagreement. Right? You're not really arguing, but maybe you don't like someone's tone. Maybe you don't like someone's facial expressions. Maybe you already had someone tell you that this person is this and that. And so when they actually talk to you, automatically you lunge at them, right? It often involves derogatory or dismissive behavior. It focuses on undermining the person rather than addressing the issue. Insulting someone's intelligence is actually one of the main examples of being disrespectful. Or mocking someone's appearance. Or pointing out their mistakes rather than actually just helping them out. Those are disrespectful ways of communicating. The key differences in this too is the intent. What is your intention of doing what you're doing? Disagreement is aimed at expressing a different viewpoint or finding a solution, whereas disrespect is aimed at belittling or devaluing other person. The tone and the approach, disagreement can be calm, courteous, and constructive, while disrespect is often hostile, rude, and destructive. The outcome in disagreement can be leading to a mutual understanding and compromising, whereas disrespectful conversation leads to conflict, hurt feelings, and damaged relationships. So in summary, disagreement is about differences in ideas handled respectfully, while disrespect is about demeaning behavior towards another person. Now let's move on to confirmation bias versus collaboration bias. They're both cognitive biases that can influence the way you dis decide for your team or individuals as a leader when you make decisions for your team or individuals. Making and perception in different contexts now, let me break it down and the main differences between the two. Now, confirmation bias by definition is literally about the tendency to search for, interpret, and remember information that confirms one's pre-existing beliefs or hypothesis while giving a disproportionately less consideration to alternative possibilities. If someone tells you already, right, that this person is this and they are always rude and they're, they're always doing this and they think they're all that, when you meet that person, you already have, are looking, you have the, the biases in your head, right? So you're always looking for that confirmation in the tone, in the examples. You're like, yeah, yeah, I just had a conversation with that person. You're right. They are this and they are that and they are this. You're not opening opportunities, but you're actually confirming somebody else's bias. You're not thinking for yourself. You let others confirm and add biases to you, right? Instead of your own interpretation of what that person is like. We all do it sometimes.
Another example would be a news consumption. A person who believes in a particular political ideology may only read news sources that align with their views and ignore or discredit sources that present an opposing viewpoint. Collaboration bias, by definition, occurs when group dynamics influence decision-making, leading to a prioritization of harmony and agreement over critical thinking and independent analysis. Now, this can result in groupthink, where the desire for consensus overrides the realistic appraisal of alternative course of action. But here's the good thing about confirmation bias, okay? If you can have a disagreement, a conversation, a logical and respectful way of disagreeing something, right? In a respectful manner and compromising. The confirmation bias goes away. It's just, I mean, collaboration bias goes away. It's just collaboration at that point. Because you can open up your opinions without being judged, right? You're not confirming anything. In fact, your goal is literally to have harmony, right? You avoid groupthink when you actually are not being judged because everyone is disagreeing with you or dis you know they're not really confirming that you know you're a good person. They're confirming like, oh my gosh, you're a bad person and you're this and you're that and you're less than. So groupthink is what you want to avoid. You don't want to agree as a group just because you don't feel comfortable providing your opinion. We all have confirmation bias one way or another, but we want collaboration, not the bias part. Collaboration bias, it, to the, the bad part of that, the negative aspect of it is the group thing. You just agree as a group because you wanna satisfy and create harmony. But if you are open, if you have a non-judgmental, caring group of people and individuals, with respect when the way you communicate, then you avoid all that biases. Let's create that space for us, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you so much for those 50 inspirational connections on LinkedIn winners. You guys are doing amazing things and may you be blessed to continue on helping our community. We are global citizens. And here is the rest of the audio room. And I love that. You're right. You can't control anyone. So you you either take it or leave it. And I think that's another thing that I have always shared with my sisters and try to implement on myself is at the end of the day, you actually are less stressed when you don't control anything or anyone but yourself. And even then, sometimes it's hard to control our own emotions, right? Because we sometimes react to a lot of things. But when you come to that point in your life where you cannot react right away when you're angry, you have leveled up yourself. And I love that. Um, Sister Susanna, what are your thoughts between confirmation bias and collaboration bias or disrespect and disagreement? Well, I like what everybody's talked about so far because they, they really hit important points is I look at this and I kind of see the stuff that's going on in the world right now. I mean, I know we're talking leadership, which is across many levels. It just feels like there's a lot of disrespect right now, a lot of name calling. And having that we should be able to disagree because everybody is is different. That's part of part of how we were all created uniquely. There are going to be disagreements. The thing is, I think some people forget that experience, each person's experience in life is going to affect their knowledge, their understanding all aspects about who they are. And when when everybody is trying to focus on what they think is right without without listening to somebody else, without trying to understand them, it creates more friction than 
than really any possibility of disagreement. And like you said, being able to work together to find solutions. We need more solutions in this world, not not more thumping. You're right. We need to be more solution oriented more than anything else um, because life is already hard. Things are moving fast. People are pulling this and that and we don't even know, right? Because we're so into our own cocoon. But this is our world. <laughs> we are going to be affected no matter what. So I love what you said about making sure that instead of reacting, breathe for a moment and get an opportunity for the other person to speak up on why, right? Um, I think that most people, when they take it in, like you said, it's from their experience in the past and the past trauma cannot be deleted in our um, experience. I wouldn't want to delete my past trauma. Who makes me today or what makes me today is because of my past trauma, right? Um, so thank you for that. And Sister Kinga, I know Angelica was up here. So Angelica, when, if you come up, I already have you on the list. It's fine. After Kinga, I'll bring you up if you get your race, uh, hands up, okay? Kinga, Sister, what is your thought on our topic for today? Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. I know sometimes we have issues on a Sunday morning. Um, you can hear me? Loud and clear. All right. Happy Sunday. Um, I love this topic. I think it's an important one. Um, when I am working on a common goal with someone, um, and I'm, I appreciate that you brought that up, if you have something that you're trying to accomplish together and that difference of opinion really matters, then obviously it's going to be important to work through that and to um, establish a place where you have that respect or feel comfortable walking away from that. And so I see disagreements oftentimes as that opportunity to collaborate and to say, you know, there was an expectation that was off. How can we from here forward either work through those missed expectations. And sometimes, in, you know, I have been in an environment where oftentimes the disagreements were around maybe a technical decision or somebody was very passionate around the direction of a priority. And so it was really around finding um, where maybe we needed to kind of go through a pros and cons kind of exercise. Um, and so when we focused on that common goal as a, as a team and we could make it not about the people like you were talking about, um, I think that when we shifted our mindset in that way, um, it really helped take the personal aspect out of it. And that is how we started to, as a team, um, think differently. There's a great book that is... Um, it was written, I think, a couple of decades ago called The Challenger um, by Brent Adamson. And I, I think he addresses that really well. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about that. And then um, I love that you brought up talking about collaboration bias also from the group think, because then also, you know, when a team is working together in this fashion, they do after a while start to kind of get into this bias where they're thinking similarly and we still want to be innovative and question one another. So I actually encourage some disagreement or for people to honor that individual um, critical thinking and let's ask, you know, question each other and do it in that respectful way uh, so that we can always be kind of pushing our boundaries, testing our limits, and, and continuing in our creative freedom um, and, and just working through. Um, that's how I think we, we start developing some really awesome new solutions together. So, Thank you for that. That was my aim is, you know, when we think about everything the same, um, sometimes it's peer pressure because you don't want to, speak up, especially if there's a hundred engineers in there and you're the only business person and you're trying to tell them, no, your budget of 20 million is not going to work because of this. 
So you kind of tend to agree, but you know it's going to fall apart, right? Because <laughs> you've seen it before. And so that's when group thinking and peer pressure really kicks in. And that's when you don't want to have that confirmation bias. But thank you for that, sister. All right, sister Angelica, what comes up for you? Sorry. Uh, thanks for bringing me up, uh, Dr. Constance, and it's good to see everybody. Uh, I think it's so important when we uh, communicate to always be kind and think about how, how the other person's going to feel with the things that we're going to say, uh, whether, whether it's in conversation or in what we write, because the, those are two different forms of communicating, right? And, and so, you know, right now we're doing this 50 inspirational connection and, um, I'm thinking of ways to encourage our team with them to write their bios, some of them to write their bios and, and their, and to post their photos in a kind and respectful way. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm putting something together and I'm going to talk with some, with some of the team about, uh, you know, how can I help them so that they can, uh, accomplish that goal because we all want to be able to be successful. So if you have any ideas or if any, anybody wants to, to, uh, ha or suggestions, I'm, I'm open. So over, oh, back over to you. Thank you for letting speak. Thank you, sister. You're doing great. I watch you guys, right? I put all of your groups together and I've watched you. And I love the initiative. I think for me, when, when it comes to group is we're so excited about what's going to happen and what are we doing and, you know, what's next. You guys forget to establish rules of engagement at the very beginning, right? Part of being a leader and also, um, you know, trying to help everybody because we're all want to help everybody is you need to establish that rules of engagement at the very beginning, not in the middle of the situation. That way, when things go away and disagree, you go back to your rules of engagement. Hey, let's be respectful. Let's be flexible. And let's talk what we can do next. Who has an idea for this, this, and this? I like your approach of um, being kind, right? It, it's really unnecessary, like what Annie said, to be rude to people. Right. But sometimes, OK, let me tell you something. Um, when I texted one of the group, I think I came off wrong. I'll, I'll be honest. If I read my own text, I'll be like, yeah, that came off wrong, CJ. And I did apologize. But that person literally, I think, took it to heart or maybe didn't listen to my apology. And I cannot control that. And most people would feel really bad that they are mad or upset. I did. But I apologize. Right. But sometimes, honestly, apology might not be accepted for you because they feel disrespected and you're going to have to let that go because again, that person's feelings and trauma or whatever comes is their control. You cannot control other people. So for me, it's, I love Angelica's idea of being kind and being respectful, but I also want to talk about intentions, right? Because if you know that I got your back and if I make a mistake of communicating then you know that it's not intentional for you to be hurt, right? It's probably me and my sick self because <laughs> I had a fever and a lot going on, right? So I think giving someone grace and really think about their intentions also make a difference. Um, who was next on my list? Ollie, bro, what comes up for you? Well, hello, hello, darling, excellent and state of shine rising. So, Amazing to feel alive, to be in the nature in the forest. It's uh, late evening right now, and I'm really blessed to be here with you. And so I would like to talk about, uh, yeah, the difference between uh, disagreement and disrespect. And there was a quote that was uh, wrongly attributed to Voltaire, but it's from another person. And that says, I might not agree to what you say, uh, but I defend to the death your right to say I think the most important is also to focus on the action, the context, and not only on the person. That's why having uh, knowledge of uh, ways to say, okay, uh, it's about your reaction, your behavior, and not you, 
food because uh, people like to be triggered uh, saying you with your identity and also uh, uh, using the tool. So giving some grace and and also um, doing the work to see uh, is it my side or is it the other side? Because uh, we never know what the others have lived. And um, maybe when we are doing the work for us, we are in more position to fully understand and to respond and not to react. So as long as there is at least one person to respond and to not react, then it will be uh, easy to de-escalate. But of course, it has to be, it takes two to the tango. So I, I totally understand uh, what you think about, I'm not going to call it a name, but I am really blessed to be there and to do my, my best to shine in this world and to um, to contribute uh, to a, a solution. There is also an expression that is this maître de raison son vin, which is put uh, water in uh, yeah, your own wine. Sometimes it's necessary so that we can reach a space which is not in my space, not in your space, but in a space where uh, it leads to the desired future for all. So thank you so much. Thank you, bro. I love that. Thank you for um, saying that. And thank you for your um, thoughts on your right. You know, you have to also look at the other person and just their trauma. Um, but for me is I don't have, I don't have ill will or I don't have any feelings of like, oh, this person's, dead. I don't have time for drama, honestly. <laughs> I love positivity and I love positive areas. So what I do is I just distance myself. Um, because I don't want those friction. I don't want to bring it in my house. I don't want to bring it around my friends. And I just kind of move on. But that also dampers my opportunity to grow with that person. However, it's both ways. They also fought, lost the opportunity to be amplified in their message, whatever their message is going to be, because of that one situation that you you took it wrong. Remember, context is everything, Right. If you don't know this person and that you don't know what they're doing and they're doing something like that, then you can tell like, OK, whatever. This person's just ill will mannered. But if you already know the context that they're just trying to help you, but they hurt your feelings, take a deep breath for a moment and and just say, OK, maybe that was just a one off. I always give grace to somebody who has uh, a little bit of a tone or an attitude at the very beginning, because I know we all are human. We make mistakes. And you might be like yelling at your kids and at the moment you're like, oh, I'm so mad, right? And it's okay. It's okay. That's human needs. But when you consistently do that way of type of communication, I already know the context, whatever that is, is gone, right? And to me, I have to honor and respect myself uh, and, and a choice to move away from friction, right? So I love that. Um, let me see who's next on my list as you guys come in. So we have Angelica, Ollie, Jen Lin. Thank you, sister, for being patient. And I will put you up. Any, go ahead and welcome everybody. I know you yeah, want to do that. Don't die, don't die. Yeah. <laughs> welcome people, all right. So when Fabio, well, and then we start to brush on their way up. Shakira, so in, in tech genius, welcome. Work nature is great to see you here. Help me, my sales, my remote sales guy. Glad you're here. Allison, welcome, also. Woodrum Coast. DI experts, welcome, glad you're here. Sylvia, good to see you. Taiwo, Fabio, fantastic Fabio sings here. He, he's a creative and media guy too. Fabio, great to see you, welcome. Timmy Tope, welcome, glad you're here. D, thanks for joining us. Kitanya, Patty Dean, Sakshi, New Geniuses, Carolina, Janela, my utilities experts, glad you're here as well. Dr. Marcia, one of the amazing co-authors in my book. I have my hand up the concerts and we stroke the book again one more time. Lessons will learn from COVID-19. It is here in my hand. We're launching on the 7th of August. So do join us then, please. Thanks to Dr. Pugh in the meantime. Amazing coach as well. And as I see you, Audra, welcome. Kim Lee, our master heart dealer. Glad you're here. Lydia. Marlene, Marlene, my message to you is coming today, my friend. It's, uh, I met Marlene last week. She's an amazing person. Passionate on a, on a mission. So do connect with her as well. Claude, I see you. Tamrat, glad you're here. Michael, my good friend, is berating me, not berating me, jabbing me in a DM as we speak, but Michael, behave yourself. 
Judith, I see you, Gustavo, thank you very much, Rasham, CJ, a storyteller strategist, uh, branding expert, uh, background creator for every virtual platform, and your LinkedIn, and your, your banners as well, social media. So Jay's going to be, become an author very, very soon, I think the next couple of weeks we're talking, right? Gustavo, welcome, Dr. Brittany, I see you. The legend, the legend that's Margaret, you know, bringing more and more people onto LinkedIn. And to, show, to showcase them as who they are, the personal side is what she's working on. So, and she also does sales and most other things. She does many, many, many things. <laughs> and I think I'm going to also as well soon. Ibango, welcome, Dr. Ruby, the one that makes our beddings. Some of us, some of us design those beddings, right? This reason we use what we use, duvets, type of bed sheets. Dr. Ruby's on that quiz, that sort of thing, right? Happy Shack, welcome, Anthony, I see you as well. Bill, Erin, so welcome, all of you. Laura, communications expert. I see, oh, that happened now, right? Thanks so much, all of you, for joining us. Yeah. I've always loved that. Listen, between you and Ollie's accent, I'm in heaven every Sunday. Like, I love people with accent. I think it's sexy. I'm just saying. So that's where it's at. So Sister Jenny, let me bring you up, sis. Let's go. I hope that you're thing here. So here's my list, guys. After Jenny, it's going to be Sharon, Monica, Mariana, Abiona, Samana, Tamra, and Dr. Marcia. So if you guys um, hop in and well, out, well, it's fine. Well, on that list. Yeah, Paulette is actually after Jen Lynn. I'm sorry. Paulette and then Sharon. Um, Jen Lynn, your mic is still not on, sir, sister. I don't know what's happening. I haven't said anything yet. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's only on Sunday mornings. I don't know why, but here I am and nonetheless. And, you know, you're in my particular playground with um, confirmation bias and collaboration bias and stuff. So I want to touch on the science just for a minute. Right, we have um, the natural conformity um, and even chemically within our bodies with dopamine and um, different kinds of chemicals that uh, come through our body and through our brain to make sure that we bond and make sure that we're kept safe. And so it has to be a very mindful practice. We have to realize that social media algorithms and things like that create what are called echo chambers of, of biases. And that is because they start, you know, they give you the personalized experience that you want. So you see everything basically that's in alignment with what it is that you want to see. And even being uh, to a certain extent, you know, good vibes only is actually a form of confirmation bias. We um, strengthen ourselves and we strengthen our ability to be able to communicate with our teams, to be able to communicate in general well when we practice outside of the situation. And what I mean by that is that it all comes down to ourselves and what we're doing every single day. We have to practice taking and creating that pause. And we have to do that in real life situations. We need to put ourselves in situations that scare us, situations that somewhat maybe anger us, situations that are outside of our regular and our norm, because then we are able to actually put those practices into play. I like to say we brain how we train. And, um, you know, you don't just go into a running building you have to practice going into a running building if it's something that you're doing for a career, if you're going to do it and do it well. So I see that across our, our lives that, um, you know, creating the pause, being able to take a breath, being able to listen, being able to understand and tap into empathy, even in a hard situation, are things that have to go beyond just theory and they have to be put into motion. So when we continuously put ourselves in rooms and places that make us uncomfortable, that's when we're really truly growing. That's when we're really truly shining in our ability to um, exercise um, those things. And so yeah, that's what I had to add this morning. Thank you. I love it, sister. I love that you went to the science with it because, yes, dopamine and everything else that we bring to our body makes a big difference. 
course you did, because I muted myself. <laughs> or my little finger did it. Sister, thank you for sharing that. And I love what you're saying in terms of the science with it. With social media just rampant in our life, it's really easy to react and, you know, be loyal to certain friends. But I think we also lose opportunities to collaborate with others when we're only sticking to our, you know, smaller, 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 smaller micro circle because we feel comfortable. That's really, that's the important part, right? My sister Susanna always tells me, well, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I can't open up. And I think that makes a big difference. When you feel comfortable, even with a stranger and sharing your thoughts and be vulnerable, you can actually um, create more of a an environment that you feel accepted. But sometimes it takes two, right? So if the other person is comfortable, but the other person's not, then that could also be a degradation of communication. So as business leaders, it's so important to pay attention to those nuances. Paulette, thank you so much for coming up. And here is your mic. And let me know what comes up for you. Um, well, two things, really. I'm going back to my work life um, more than my recent life. Um, and I used to work as um, someone who would go in as a consultant into a difficult situation, um, generally as a mediator. So you'll head first into all of those. Um, you've got people that believe they're right, come what may. You've got biases. You've got opinions about why the company is where it's at. They're all blaming each other. It's just a hot house of poo. And um, you have to somehow work out the divide. And it's not the divide to say, right, who's saying who's going. It's the divide to find out where the fact is from fiction. And there's always fiction because where there's people we always add 5% or 10% as to the story, how it really was. And by the time you've gone around the room, you've added half a game. So I always used to find it really, really easy by saying to people that as the problem director, I have absolutely no opinion of you or what you've done or what you haven't done. Come into the office as a newbie to me and you show yourself up to me as your as a newbie. I'll be watching your every move and how you react with others in their most vulnerable and also in their most difficult. So if you show me that you can't manage people or that you are pushing your perspective when it's unjust and unfair, then believe me, there's only one place you're heading and that will be through the door. So what I'm looking for is managers who can be all things to all people. I would hand everybody a copy of Who Moved My Cheese. I used to buy them by the thousand, literally. And I would hand every single person a copy of that book, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, all about the fear of change. And part of biases, part of fear is what drives 90% of bias. Because you are always going to have your feelings of how you were felt the last time that thing was said or how you felt the last time that circumstance occurred for you. And that's what you bring into your situation, regardless of whether or not this is the, it is relevant. It's still what you bring. It's like it's on your back in a rucksack in your caravan with you. They call it a chip on your shoulder sometimes. I think it's more like a rucksack of rocks. Um, so understanding who you are is to me the most important, uh, most important thing that you can bring to the party. And I always used to say to people, remember what you do is important. Remember what you say is important, but remember how you made somebody feel is more important than anything else. And kindness is king. And then I would shut the door and walk out and leave them to all talk about me. <laughs> but I found that by addressing it head on was my only, it's like a defense mechanism, deal with it all in one go, like, you know, go in there like a rocket, bang, here you go, this is what you're dealing with. And, and they were terrified. They thought they'd, you know, I've got a hatchet woman here. And they didn't know that I was a marshmallow. That was just the exterior. But that was who I had to present myself as. And then I would work my way through and gradually find 
that most of the people in the room were just frightened of something. They've all got their own fears, and you know, biases is a great word. Fear is another, and that that's what they bring to the table, and that's what you have to work through. And communication and understanding and love and kindness. Honestly, I say that in in a workplace, yes, love and kindness are more important than anything else. You'll have a team that care about each other. They'll have a team that want to socialize with each other. They'll have a team that will grow, develop, and actually outperform every other team because they cared about each other. You've got to get there first. Honestly, you've got to you got to knock the walls down in order to get there. And the only way to knock the walls down is to go in fighting and be the feisty one and say, "These are what this is what I've heard. This is what I'm expecting." Um, and people don't like hearing that you've heard bad things about them. I would be horrified to hear bad things have been said about me. But actually, I'm so used to it. <laughs> don't care anymore. I'm so used to having that situation as a in an employee. Now as a retired old gal, well, I don't really give a monkey. I know who I am. I know who I look like in the mirror. I know who, who I try to stop for and to show people who I am. And if you if you leave with kindness, no one can really say anything about you except you fart hand floss. Well, you know what? If that's the best you can come back with, then good luck to you. You know. And I found out that's called can, candy cotton. Oh, I never get it right. Cotton candy. Yeah, I fart cotton candy. So that's how horrible I am. How sickly sweet I am. But you know what? I take me any day over the the, the bully the bully boys that I have come across and the aggressors. And the people that feel like their opinion counts and yours doesn't matter. So that's who I am. That's how I do it. And that's how I've always done it. I don't carry around 50 copies of Uber at my cheese in my bag anymore. Um, I might carry some cheese, but I don't actually carry books. Thank you, Dr. Constance, for the opportunity to uh, get by to kind of. Oh my gosh. I love it. I told you. Like people with accent, I am like for you. <laughs> so I love it. I'm just, that's my confirmation bias, yeah, guys. Dr. Constance works herself out to pick it. <laughs> stupid mute button. Um, Paulette, I love it. I think, you know, your opinion is always so amazing to me. You bring light to a lot of things based on your experiences. And honestly, I was so upset when you came into the audio room that someone talked smack about you. Like, Asked Susanna and Danielle, I was like, if I find out those person, I swear, how could they be mean to Paulette? What is wrong with them? Um, yeah, no. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. I really love what you said about, um, I actually, when I was a manager, I actually do who moved the cheese, but I don't have thousands of copies. I literally have five in my office and we do a book club and, and, and talk about, um, you know, features of the profound truth about change. Um, I love that. Um, uh, him and Ha is my, you know, those two characters, right? Um, two little people named Him and Ha. I love those two characters. Those are amazing. And you're right. I do carry cheese. I love cheese. Um, we're going to talk about cheese later on. But thank you so much for that. And before I bring in Sharon, um, I wanted to go back and look back to all of my sisters and brother here as an ambassador. Because I want to see what comes up for them after, you know, four people come up and, and give their thoughts about what is happening with disagreement, collaboration, bias. Let's start with Sister Danielle. I'm checking up on you, sis. What are your thoughts? Danielle, are you still there? Yes. There you are. I was walking to go. Oh, um, <laughs> the minute I walked away to go wake up my kids, sorry. Um, my thoughts are, you know, we have to... Well, hearing what everybody is saying is we have to almost when we have conflict, I mean, even for myself being now diverse, you know, having, you know, the need to, or feeling the need to defend myself in some ways, um, learning to take a step back because we can't control others' opinions of ours, of us, of ourselves, um, and moving away from having to prove something. Um, and so what I, I try to tell myself, which I hope this is on topic of what you're asking, sister, but when I, what I try to tell myself is that person's intention, I hope, 
is not bad. What is it that they're trying to communicate to me or give me feedback so that I can grow? Um, and so I think that's really important, especially in confirmation bias. You know, I talk again about um, how to combat it. Because even for myself, um, you know, having you know, rejection, you know, having issues with rejection, which I'm not sure if anybody, you know, like, tell me your secrets if you know, <laughs> you know, how to deal with, with that or, or having ill feelings. But, um, you know, we, we have to do the work sometimes outside of ourselves. And even it's okay if we didn't react, you know, the way we wanted to. But acknowledging that and being able to move forward is is a step in the in, in a great direction. So um, that's where accountability and empathy, not only for the other person but also for ourselves, because we could always come back and say, you know what, I may have not handled that well. I would really like to have a conversation moving forward so that I can grow or that I can help clarify maybe where there was miscommunication. So. Yeah, that's what I have to say for now, sister. Thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> always. We're always patient with each other. Um, Any, what are your thoughts? Let me work, let me work on more people because the room just gets bigger and bigger. I'm, I'm half in distress. I can't work on my missed people. And there's dentists gone. I saw dentists in the media. So I can't see dentists again. Yeah, okay. So where, where am I? Kishore, welcome, Dr. Mu, great to see you. Willie J, you made it in the end. Thank goodness you're here. Cyrus, I see you too. Deborah, what, 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 Elkan, thank you so much for joining us. That's the comfort, I see you, Michelle, our housing and all the room teams that you are. Glad you're here. Good Malemo, welcome. Uh, I'm Liver Pinder. Thanks for joining us. Jeffrey, where have you been, Jeffrey? And I, I miss you, Jeffrey. I haven't seen you for a long time, I think. Glad you're here, though. Roland, I see you as well. Kirat, welcome. Say, Cheryl, welcome as well. Agbana, welcome. Dr. Lisa, glad you're here. Dr. Lisa talks. I think it's, you know, it's self awareness and mindset. That's what I call what Dr. Lisa talks about. I've seen your post anyway, my friend. Glad you're here. But Tom, one of the best fitness. And physical health gurus you ever gonna meet, man. Like, understated kind of guy, but he's the man is super talented and he's specialised in practical, simple techniques to keep healthy and keep fit. You know, without exercising too much. Of course I'm gonna like that, right? Exercise too much. But okay, what's the point of that? Say so Christiana, I don't want to talk about baby loss, glad you're here. So Michelle, I see my friend Brian. Well, it's ingenious. Thank you so much all for joining us. Look, I think, you know, if, if I, if from what I've heard so far, which I think is probably hit the nail on the head, you know, the, our conversation today really comes down to intent. You know, what's your intent for saying what you're, what you're, what you're trying to communicate? I can call let's put it in now very well in terms of you know, kindness has to be one way that we have to focus on rather than, you know, above all else, maybe. We disagree, and it's if you say, you know, I disagree with your kindness, you know, it, ma- it matters how you say it. With, I disagree with you. So I, was in, I was talking to Lisa Houston the other day, and she's trying to teach me how to say, I disagree, I disagree with her thing was simply to try, start, start off with a line of, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not sorry. Anyway, that's just a, that's one way right ahead. To failing that line of saying I disagree with you, I think it's about being authentic and also having respect for yourself. Maybe for and also for the for your for your person you're talking to, the other your and your other group members. So that even if you have that level of respect, you know, it's hard for anyone to take offence. Because I think I think deep down we you know we, we we should expect that not everyone's going to agree with us. I think we can accept it. You know, it's, often it's how it's said that we think upsets us. And that's that, that's just my thought. Awesome, thank you. You're right. It is all about intent, right? It's all about what your intentions are. But the problem is, if you don't know how people work, sometimes 
and you you get a message i think sometimes people think oh what is her intention for saying that she hurts my feelings again for me my rule of thumb is if you hurt my feelings once i'm going to let it go you're human if you consistently do it the second or third time i'm going to let you go um out of respect and i don't like disagreement unless you really are getting in my face and that's a different story i won't back down but i also won't start a problem it's just not in my nature um i would rather collaborate with you than have all of these issues right that's me it's collaboration um i know my sister susana has to go to church so i do want to ask her thoughts on so far what you've heard what are your thoughts sister and what comes up for you uh, i again i can echo danielle on any they've hit so many so many key points in this and the the joy of all of this actually is especially when you get five of us on stage five different opinions that cover so many different things the thing that i kind of take from what everybody's talked about so far uh which which strikes that that chord with me and everything i talk about anyway is knowing your authentic self knowing who you are so that whatever the situation is you can put your best foot forward um i mean Paulette talked it uh, it's it's just when when you know when you know who you are at that core then when you get into a disagreement it's easier to deal with a disagreement and hopefully you can see if if you're dealing with somebody that's disrespectful if you've got a disrespectful core you're going to just go at them back and forth but if you don't if you've got that heart if you if you're that soul centered person at your authentic core then you're just going to find ways to let them be and and move forward as uh, yeah i keep saying as yourself but that's that's really so important to know yourself because then you're better able to collaborate you're better able to hold your ground when others are being disrespectful and this this is something that the more we see our authentic selves the more we the more we can stand up and understand whatever bias we might have but then work with others disagree but find solutions collaborate but don't roll over then everything's going to be in a much better situation and i'm going to head to church now <laughs> praying for my soul sister thank you <laughs> thank you so yes, much dear. yes thank you so much i'll see you tonight at 7 i forgot to tell you guys like Paulette i just want you to know i am so i mean not me just all of us really are so excited especially Susana and i with your vast experience that you're part of our rebel with a cause um anthology like i i'm beyond myself like i'm just saying to tell you that okay publicly sister kinga what comes up for you sis um so there's so many great points here and i'm going to speak a little bit more based off of my corporate background um and from leading communities within corporations so i think a lot of people here can also identify just from being community leaders or yourselves um and what i was doing was helping nurture kind of this community setting within um within corporations and helping them scale and what i would notice is that when i had teams that would build strong bonds um and it was awesome because they would go through that normal phase of you know um they would kind of start the what is it the forming storming kind of situation where at first you know they're not necessarily agreeing on everything but finally they start gelling and and then they really kind of have that good groove going and they start to 
trust one another. And I thought this is this is innovative. They're getting stuff done, and they really have an awesome culture. What I noticed is that when new people come in, um, they sometimes felt a little isolated because they didn't know to acknowledge Paulette's point. I think um, people don't necessarily always know how they fit in, and so they're observing. And what feels great to everybody in the group that got to be a part of growing it as a newbie coming in, it might not feel as great. And so for leaders to be hyper aware that as you are growing and scaling, what felt really awesome for the original kind of group doesn't necessarily feel the same as you're expanding, as you're growing. And so um, being cognizant of checking in with new people as they onboard, um, developing some kind of process where you're getting that feedback loop, um, making sure that you're staying in touch with everybody as you grow to say, you know, does everybody find a way that they feel that they have a place here? I think it's just super important um, so that we continue to evolve our culture, our climate, that everybody feels that we have an evolving climate. You know, we talk a lot about culture versus climate of our communities. And I think that it's so um, just critical to make everybody feel like they actually have a say and a part of that climate. Um, and then we talk a lot about intent and how, how we interpret someone's intent or not. As someone who definitely fumbles her words um, often and has been um, probably misunderstood in certain ways and misinterpreted for my intent um, unintentionally, um, what I, I often do if I find myself in a situation um, where I think, gosh, you know, I'm not necessarily reading this intent from somebody in a way that I like and I want to work with this person or I want to have a relationship with this person, um, I ask. I, I actually, rather than deciding whether or not I'm going to walk away from the relationship, unless they have just straight out disrespected me, but I'm kind of on that teetering point, I might just ask them simply, you know, what what is your intention? Do you, and I give them a couple options. I might ask them, you know, are you, are you trying to suggest this or are you trying to suggest this other way? just to get that clarity. So, you know, just learning to be more clear on the communication lines, but also taking ownership of that side of the relationship myself, um, I just think is kind of important so that we don't just walk away from opportunities. I love that. I love that, sister, about intention. And yes, it's forming, norming, performing, and storming. I just taught that lecture last week um, about, you know, group thinking and um, basically leadership. So thank you for that. All right. So before I bring in, so on my list, so you guys know, um, even if you, you know, get down, I have Sharon next, uh, Mariana, Abiona, Temrat, Dr. Marcia, Jesse, Banghi, Islam, and Bryant. So I haven't forgotten about you guys. So we're just going to go fast as we go along because we do want to respect everybody's time. Um, and Sharon, what comes up for you? Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for everybody who's listening. Um, what comes up for me is, some, is a subject matter that I feel very strongly about, and it's the power of our work. Um, and our words are very powerful. Powerful. So we really have to choose our words mindfully and with intention. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect at the choice of words we are, we're using. And so what I like to do is if I notice that something is off from the way I delivered something or maybe from something I said, like Kinga said, I will ask for clarification. I will, I will ask how what I said landed. Um, but in the process, I not only give the other person grace for maybe how they received what I said, I, I'm learning to give myself more grace. I'm a work in progress when it comes to this, but I'm learning to give myself more grace for 
um, maybe unintentionally, um, you know, delivering something not the way I wanted to, um, because I know myself and my intent is not to hurt other people. Um, so as long as I know that my intention is not to hurt someone else, then even if that other person can't give me grace for um, the interaction and the communication, I have to learn to give myself grace and be able to disconnect from that feeling that I get um, of wanting to fix it. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And I love that you give grace to people because we do need grace for ourselves before we give grace to others. So thank you for that. Um, let's see who is next. Can we keep our share to two minutes? We have a lot going on here. I love it though. Keep it coming. Um, okay. So Mariana, what comes up for you and, uh, in terms of disagreement and disrespect? Um, good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, it's Sunday here, so I want to say everyone happy weekend for everyone here. Um, I would like to say that I see everything as uh, uh, when we are talking about personal life. Personal life, it's like a family. And uh, when we are talking about professional life, it's... Uh, uh, let's say, good company. What does it mean if uh, rules uh, which exist inside family uh, uh, are exposed and new members of the family uh, get the same opportunity to understand everything and to question if they don't understand everything and get right, right and transparent answer, everything is okay. And in these circumstances, uh, there are no rudeness or, you know, uh, in some periods you, you act normally, polite, uh, with uh, giving everything a time and in crisis, uh, or some other priorities, uh, you act in a different way. So words and actions in parallel agreed create a situation when, where everybody are satisfied. And uh, that is something that we all want in our private and professional life. So that's it. Um, Thank you so much, Mariana. I appreciate you for um, your share. And also, like you said, you know, family and personal and also business. Sometimes we do it the same way, except we have biases with our family because we don't know. Oh, my gosh. Every time I open my mouth, they're always going to shut me down because they think I'm this and that. So you roll your eyes and not communicate anymore because you're like, no, it's going to, I'm going to be disrespected in about a second as soon as I open my mouth. Right. That's the bias that we have with our, with our family for sure. It's always the confirmation bias that comes up. Thank you so much for coming up and everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we almost hit a hundred today already for coming here. I, my heart is full. Thank you for sharing this room. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing. You all are VIP in my heart, Annie's heart, Danielle, Susanna, and Kinga, and everybody here. Thank you, and I appreciate you. Uh, um, I love that you talk about, you know, um, information on emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is not about controlling other people's emotions. It is actually looking at other people's emotion and how you can control whatever they exudes on you. Um, if they are angry at you, you can't control their anger, but you can control how you react to that anger. Um, so I love that conversation, definitely. And you're like, be curious and have the space to talk about your thoughts. Um, we are coming towards the end, and I know there's still a lot of people wanted to speak. So please share your thoughts on this topic for at least two minutes. And thank you so much for all of you who are 
still here raising your hand. Tamra, Dr. Marcia, Jesse, Bangha, Islam. What's up, bro? Brian, Dr. New, and Laura, I will get to you. Tamra, what comes up for you, sir? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Constance. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, King. Thank you, Daniela. I'm deeply honored to be selected for the opportunity among LinkedIn 50 inspiration individuals. I haven't come with earlier. That's what I want to say today. Thank you for recognizing my first and considering me many such things, individuals like, you know, you are acknowledged, try to motivate and inspire me and others to continue to strive for excellence. After I say this, when I come to the point, for me, like confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, and re remember information in a way that one pre-existing belief and value, that means self-reference criteria, it might be based on culture. Culture means a lot, so perception of realities hinder our objective decision-making. So because of that, disagreement is become natural part of human interaction arising from, you know, in opinion, belief, and interpretation, because culture and self-reference criteria. So, what we have to do is, we are encouraged, or you are encouraged to seek wisdom, be open to corrective, and examine all things to avoid confirmation bias. When facing disagreement, pursue peace, speak the truth in love, resolve conflict gracefully, and break be with one another, I mean. As other, the most important thing is exercise, patience, and forgiveness, understanding that everyone has flaws and difference. Every effort you make today, plant a seed for tomorrow. Tomorrow's success. Stay dedicated, stay inspired, and then continue to inspire others along the way. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate you so much. And you're right. Let's continue to inspire others because that is what the community is all about, is 50 inspirational. Dr. Marcia, thank you so much for being patient. What comes up for you? Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you so much for allowing me to share. I a thought came to my mind when we looked at confirmation bias, and it, it, it came to me that if, if we we are finding that we are discounting persons because their beliefs does not complement ours, we, we 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 maybe should take thought because if 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 I find and I'm speaking from a from a as a leader of an organization that a member of staff constantly find themselves in conflict or confrontation with others. I, I always feel that it is worth introspecting to see if or how your own behavior or your attitudes or your beliefs might be contributing to these recurring issues because you are the recurring listener. If every time you relate to someone, it results in a conflict or a confrontation, then the problem cannot be the other person solely. It has to be you. And so for we, we need to look at the phrase that says, and I, and I think I did a post on it, it's harder to read the label from the inside because that's really the challenge when it comes to confirmation bias and, and uh, not engaging people with dignity and grace because we, we, it's a challenge for some of us to, to look at ourselves and to recognize our own biases and our faults and be willing to apologize to people. And one of the things, the ways I think that the persons can ensure that they, they, they communicate with respect and preserve the dignity of the next person is to reflect on their reactions. Look at how I trigger. They trigger me and how I trigger them. I am with you, Dr. Constance, as it comes to confrontation, walking away. And, I, and, I, and, I, and when I say walking away, I do not mean that we are not loving to confront and to deal with those issues because sometimes in the heat of the moment, persons are not prepared to allow logic to, to reign. It's really emotions. And so we must we must try at times not to prioritize winning an argument. We must sometimes try to make it an amicable, mutual, beneficial conversation by accepting 
each other's viewpoints and agreeing to disagree. But sometimes we are just concerned with being right when we and, and, and create and destroy relationships that are really worthwhile. So let us just one of the goals is trying to be understanding rather than winning an argument and, and putting ourselves in the other person's shoes and setting the ground rules so that we emphasize respect and, and we, 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 we are open-minded and we leave each other's dignity intact. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you for your share. Uh, I love that. You're right. Sometimes when I do walk away, it's not because of anything. I don't, I used to when I was younger, like I have to be right, but you don't have to be right. What does it get you? Nothing. More conflict, right? I walk away because I'm a hothead. I walk away because I know and I understand that my words matter. If I say something that I let go, I don't care how many times you apologize to me, you let go the words that disrespected my emotions and my feelings. So, even though you forgive someone, right, you really, your body triggers every time you see that person's name or even mention or see that person's picture, you kind of like deep inside of you, you have this little invocation of emotions and feelings all at once. It's because you felt that your feelings were hurt. That's why it's super important, ladies and gentlemen, to watch your words carefully, right? It can cut like blades, like a thousand paper cuts. Have you guys had paper cuts before? It hurts, okay? More than a knife, probably. Um, I've never been stabbed, so I wouldn't know, but I have stabbed my fingers so many times with paper, paper cuts, and it hurts, okay? So words are like that. It's like a thousand paper cuts in your body when, when somebody that you value told you or demeaned you or disrespected you in so many ways. So thank you for that, Dr. Missy. I really appreciate you. You're right. Sometimes we're like, oh yeah, I have to be right. You don't have to be right, right? I think that is, a really great way to open up yourself and just kind of walk away so you can breathe so you don't have any emotions or words that you let go that you might regret later. Jesse, what comes up for you? Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're doing well in your family. Thank you for having me here, guys. I think, too, one thing is important for a leader. You should always lead with love, truth, peace, justice, and equality. Those are the essential components for a great leader. And you must always be willing to sacrifice your energy, your time, and your thought process in order to understand the people around you. Because you have to understand the individuals who have taken the time to follow you, who have taken the time to be with you, who are by your individuality that becomes a collective mindset. So you must always lead with these particular characteristics so you can always see their passions. Because as leaders, your job is to ignite fire in them so they can become leaders, so they can guide people on another path that you created together. And that's how we build something that's also united and that spreads throughout the entire planet because this is the true birth of greatness. When you have these qualities as a leader, people don't even have to call you a leader. They see it when you walk into the room. They know a leader because a leader has taken the time to go through every single step. Like walking up the steps and climbing to that mountaintop, people see a leader because a leader has other leaders beside them and beneath them and around them. And that's the quality that we always have to have. And so when miscommunications come, you understand that leader's methodology because he has broken down or she has broken down all the stuff to get there and leave a blueprint and make sure that the blueprint is able to be revised. When we're leaders, we must always be able to listen to the things that are being delivered to us from other people, whether it be a, a low voice or a small voice. And if they're scared to talk in a large group, offer them time alone, one-on-one -on -one time, take them to a place that they're comfortable with as a bar, a sporting event, Give them a sense of pride. Give them your undivided attention because you're a leader. You took on the responsibility to grant everyone access to you. So you must let them see in your eyes as a man, as a woman, that they have your attention, they have your power, and they have true respect that you gave them. And they can speak for you because leaders want you to speak for them. Because as a leader, you should not always be speaking for yourself. You should give them the wisdom and the guidance to feel comfortable to grow to when they receive you. Like I said a second ago, that's a leader. And now you can walk away. 
because you know the work is going to get done because you gave the will, you gave the purpose. And that's what's missing in the world. Leaders have to give purpose, value, consistent, own, consistent, you know, leadership, consistent love, consistent heart. These things must be driven into the soul of a person because when you activate a person's soul, it will stay with you forever. No matter where you go, it will always represent your qualities because you impart on them to heal them because you're healing them. You're healing them of their voice because a lot of times people don't know what leadership is. So they have to come to you. And so you're healing their voice so they can speak freely amongst anyone, anywhere, no matter the weather. And that's the thing I believe a leader really is. I love that, Jesse. I love your energy. Uh, I'm just imagining myself like working out with you. Man, you'd be yelling at me. CJ, get that left leg going. <laughs> that would be something you would tell me. I'm like, no, Jesse, it's not happening, bro. Um, I love it. And I love that you talk about, you know, being a leader sometimes is not about you just talking about yourself. It's about other people talking about you. And I think the powerful part of our networking here is that you guys are amazing. You already know it. The people who come here every Sunday, you crave that positive vibe because you actually are learning something from everyone. It's called experiential learning. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Again, I respect everyone's time, so I'm going to end with Laura. So it will be Islam, Dr. Mew, and Laura. And then for the rest of you, Sharon, Fabio, and Wubuyela, thank you so much for being here. Please add your thoughts, your opinions, everything that I want to share on there. I just also want you guys to know that um, I did record this conversation, not from the very beginning. I think it started with Angelica for sure. Um, and I will individually, whoever got, got up and speak on the stage today, I'm going to individually reach out to you because I think this needs to be on Spotify and iHeart. This conversation is super amazing and it's necessary for us to bring about change in our community and you are the community, right? So this is why I will um, put it and I will, if you don't want me to put your voice um, in a hundred countries and nations, um, I will contact you individually. So Islam, thank you so much. And after Islam, I'm going to have any uh, come up because I know he's dying right now to welcome everybody. So Islam, go ahead. And what comes up for you, brother? Hello, Dr. Constance, Kinga, Daniela, everyone. Um, I'm very glad to be here today. And uh, this is a crucial topic I'm talking about because the world nowadays became a small village and uh, to be able to communicate, you have to be a global citizen. And Dr. Constance, any Mike, uh, the Hounds, everybody who is doing something to connect people is a truly global citizen. And to be truly global citizen, you have to transcend the gaps between you and people. And he said that um, it's, it's, um, it's a really great ton of effort for him to be annoyed. And I think that's what should everybody could have. Um, nothing should annoy you very easily. You should understand from a cultural perspective. You should understand people, where are they coming from? For example, there's, uh, like, uh, in, in business, uh, even somebody mentioned business, camera, I mentioned business and culture. Um, there's hostess culture dimension, uh, where, um, People understand the different cultures and the organization that's taking place, like uh, distance and uh, and power and and future and all of these culture cultural components. I think we should understand people where they are coming from, so that we can have a a very uh, what should I say a very wide breadth when we are talking with them. Um, Talking with them with understanding, talking with them with, with absorption, talking with them with, with uh, inclusivity. Um, being a global citizen, that's what's important, because the world is a global village, and that's what keeps us together, and that's what makes us human. We are all human, and we would like to help each other and be there for one another. Thank you very much, Dr. Constance, and everybody for giving me the opportunity. 
I love that. We are a global citizen, guys. This is our world. It's no longer northern or eastern or western. LinkedIn literally has linked all of us in. We are a community. We are responsible for each other. Again, uh, just a reminder, after Dr. New and Laura, I will end this room. Out of respect, I do have another meeting that I do have to go to, which is recording with the 50 Inspirational Connections video. So Fabio, Sandra, and Kishore, I would love to see your share. Please add it to the comment section. If you add it in detail, I will read it so I can add it to this audio um, event that I'm putting in together. I'm recording this just to let you know. Individually who spoke here, I will um, message you individually because I will put it on MP3 by tomorrow. So you can hear your voice, your opinions, your thoughts on Spotify. That's how I amplify your message. Um, any bro, I know you're dying. Go ahead before I bring in Dr. New. Thank you, thank you. I mean, the, the numbers have been amazing today. Thank you so much, all of you, for gracing us with your Sunday. I definitely appreciate it. We'll come back again next week, of course. And do join my room later on. My activities, my book, I feel they will series is on tonight. I think I'm going to write again. Do join us. So welcome, Sheila. That's how I can pronounce your name. I can pronounce another way. As she, I think Sheila sounds right to me. My good friend, Dentist. Thank you for joining us. Maybe one of the chosen 50 of us are welcome. What about you, like, food, legends, and like a dinner family? And distance around the world, you know, a very educated man. I'm glad you're here, grace us your time. So, Claude, I see you. Jennifer, so I'm an the IP expert these days. Kenny, I see you too, Kenny. Now, Kenny, these cakes, biscuits, and God knows, and delicious, scrumptious meals, I know, snacks I have in a cup of unicorn. Yeah, Kevin, just thank you so much for joining us over here. <laughs> I can feel that energy, Annie. Um, again, guys, we're going to talk to Dr. New and Laura. And for the rest of you who have your hands raised, I respect your time. But I also want to make sure that I respect everybody's time. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. I will be reading. Okay, so if you are here and you raise your hands and you have a point that you want, please write them down on the comment section of this audio room. That way, I can read your thoughts on the radio. I will be putting this on Spotify, iHeart, Deezer, Audible, you name it, Apple, Google Play, your thoughts today, right? And if you don't want your thoughts to be out there and amplified, let me know so I can delete it. Um, and then we'll go from there. Dr. New, what comes up for your sister? Um, I do want to hit this about five minutes so if we could share two to three minutes for dr new and laura i would love that thank you sister cj and yeah king and everyone that's listening i see each and every one of you my love and my heart is full also when listening to not only cj and everyone here and this is a beautiful topic that I think a lot of everyone already spoken about. But one other thing I like to add is that in what we communicate with respect and collaborations, what does it feel like and what is it to the other person, the other organizations? And it's really sometimes having a moment to really not only when we treat one another with respect and kindness, like if we envision, visualize the other person, the other part it is our family, our most cherished, loved family, if it come up for them, that doesn't align, that alignment is not on the same at wavelength, then how do we get to react and act upon it? And that is something that we all can improve, and that's something Coming from a previously, you know, I, even our own family, I would also get triggered after the because we expect them to also it, have to love us, right? They have to support us. They have to, that all of that should and have. But when we let go, 
and we let go of the expectation of others and just let them be. And that's why mindfulness for me is that when we let them be and just observe them without judgment and, and having that judgment of thoughts of this is what this is. But it's the only thing that we can change in our world is how we act, how we get to choose to act. And when we come in from a place of love and kindness and empathy and really putting your shoe, you know, your place in other shoes, but also taking a further step is that everyone is different. Everyone walks life is different. So even though they are triggered, even though you have reflection, then maybe you did say something, even though this is where we have to go further, it's not only grace to give others. And then I see Dr. Marcia mentioned is that we have to have reflection is did we really communicate with our words and our energy? We come in, do we pursue that really that inclusivity for everyone? Or did we really say from our perspective in that little moment that others took offensive, but we say, Well, I didn't do it. But that's also coming from our own reflection of our ego standing up and saying <laughs> Thank you, sister, for that. I, I truly, I love, listen, guys, um, Dr. New is one of those sisters that even if someone was trying to hurt her, she loves them back anyway, right? I want to inject a little bit of that with her, and I learned from her to let go with things you can't control. I have, listen, it's easy to give advice, but taking your own advice, it's like swallowing a huge rock in my throat, right? But it's necessary for growth. And as leaders in this world, right, we have our kids watching us. We have the future leaders and business leaders and CEOs and conglomerate owners watching us and how we behave ourselves as an adult. It is super important the way we communicate with each other and show grace and empathy. Laura, I'm going to end this with you. And then uh, what comes up for you, dear sister? What an honor to end. I'm so overwhelmed by the talent, the fantastic quality of the colleagues that are here. So thank you for allowing me to come up. And I'm very much humbled to be in such good company. I'll be brief, which is not a strong point, but I will. I want to commend the comments and the commenters, Dr. Marsha especially, uh, and uh, Dr. New. We're talking about conflict and how to navigate disrespect. And here's the three points. Everything is an inside job. We hear this so much on LinkedIn that it may just uh, seem cliche, but honestly, your ability to respond is your superpower. And as Dr. Marshall says, sometimes you know, or rather she implied, that sometimes we can uh, win the battle but lose the war, yes? And so it is very important to take a step back not react immediately, but instead listen to what the, the quote-unquote gripe is about. Examine where the conflict is and start with you first because communication starts with you. And we don't know what we do not know. I would make assumptions as a new ESO educator that I look back on and say, hey, that was pretty stupid. Why did I think that, say that, feel that? And it's because at that time, many years ago, more than 15 years ago, I didn't know my students. I didn't know my communities that I've worked in as well as I do now. And why was that? Because I was making assumptions without listening. So I just want to say that true leadership starts with you. It is an inside job. That means it starts with your self-reflection. And it also ends well when you are able to objectively ask questions, listen actively, and remain curious. 
because as even someone else has said here, we don't intentionally hurt people. If we hurt people intentionally, that's a whole other conversation. And leadership is about mentorship. And leadership is about reflection. And those are the qualities that one needs in order to, uh, you know, address these conflicts. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate you. And I like that inside job. Yes. Um, and Dr. No, thank you for repeating always what I say about collaboration over competition. It is necessary to collaborate. We amplify our messages much faster when we collaborate than compete. That mentality of I have to be the best, the best of what, right? We are the best together. Um, I also will tell you that go where you are celebrated, but not where you are just tolerated. Some people you feel some edge, you just can't pinpoint it, right? There's something in there. The vibe is just different because they're just tolerating you because they need you not because they're celebrating you as a person. So go where you are celebrated, not tolerated. And here's what I'm going to impart for you guys. Embrace the journey ahead with courage and optimism, knowing that every step you take brings you closer to your dreams, whatever that may be. Believe in your potential. Stay true to your purpose, whatever your purpose may be. Or maybe you don't have one, create one. And let your passion guide you to extraordinary achievements. And remember, the best is yet to come. And you have the power to make it happen. So for today, happy Monday to some of you. Happy Sunday to some of you. Keep shining. Um, Susanna and I are giving out a $500 uh, free anthology to our anthology that's coming up on August 1st. We start writing. It's called Rebel with a Cause because I want to amplify everybody who questions the status quo and says, you know what? Enough about hurting. Let's go find the solution to our pain and turn it into passion. So we're giving it away uh, every Sunday at 7 p.m. PST. So just go to my YouTube at Lua by Doc Leland. Also on the 27th at 9 a.m. on Saturday, I will have an open forum to whatever you want to talk about, networking, whatever you want to talk about. It's going to be an open Zoom. It's not live here. Just log in, luabydoc.com, L-U-A-B-Y-D-O-C.com. There's no pitch slapping. Just kind of say hi, right? Um, I'm trying to make shortcut. <laughs> I had a lot of complaints about my calendar being not open till October. Guys, I am busy amplifying your message. That's what I do best. I want to collaborate and put you on the pedestal. Because you deserve it. You are the king and queen of your own domain. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to leave it to any for last quote or last any announcement. He has an audio room. Any, please um, tell us about your book and also what your room is going to be. Kinga, I know you have an event as well. Go ahead and speak. So, any, go for it, brother. So, do me a favor. Who was before Dr. Ben? I was, I was looking at this. My brain. Uh, no, I have the list. Uh, Doctor New was Brian. I don't have the okay. last name though, but he was Brian. Uh, there were about okay. twenty-three okay. people trying to come in today, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, okay. That's Brian. I know. I know Brian. That's fine. I'm well, 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 Writing her books as we speak, so you want to find out more about her and her passions and her dreams. So we're in good time. Simon, see you, Dr. Kathy. Welcome, Romy. Glad you're here. Where have you been, Romy? Good missing you, my friend. You had in England somewhere, right? TC, welcome as well. Glad you're here. Yes, everyone. Uh, Lua Ferra. Uh, it's an end to your name, my friend. Lua, I see you there. Welcome, Rashan. I see you as well. Thank you so much, everyone, spending your time with us. Look, you know, I think, you know, for today's conversation, you know, it's been very interesting and informative. So thank you for all the share that we've had. You know, from, from personal experience, you know, it's easy, it's easy to be upset by other people. It really is. Especially on, on, on LinkedIn. I think, you know, we put ourselves in that situation, you know, and we, we you know, for me, it's like learning that 
I can't, I can't react to anything. I have to think carefully and respond appropriately. Right? And it's easy to just like fly off the handle because that, that doesn't help anyone. Whereas I respond as best you can is what I try and do. Even when some when people are doing are going at me, I still find a way to respond in a way that if it, if it ever came to I will share my response with anyone. Yeah, that's my that's my that's my standard really. Like LinkedIn quite cool to come to me and say, right, this person says you did. I can have to say, right, here's a conversation with him. My group comes to me and says you did I'm like, here's a conversation with that. I did the best I could to be professional and to be kind, to be helpful, to be authentic, to be honest. You know, whilst truly understanding that everyone's got differences. And I think that let, let, let's, let's find that let's use those qualities that, that come naturally. You know, the, the best parts of us, but our best parts don't respond to. And I say, you know, no, well, no one's inherently made or born to be angry, to be rude, to be disrespectful. But let's not make that our default response. You know, I think you know, when we truly approach communication with an authentic, purposeful, and kind way of being, everything else flows, as I've been saying. Everything is true, and everything is true, and you know, communication is much easier when we're genuine. The last I'll say is simply that, you know, even if you do get someone who got people coming at you, it's not your problem, leave it with them. I don't care. Me too. We still need to record yours, bro. <laughs> King has already had one, Danielle and Susanna. So I'm waiting on you and you're going to enjoy it. Uh, King and I had a little bit of emotional reaction in one of our group three submission. The vulnerability is so strong. I am like, wow. Um, dear sister Kinga, what comes up for you? Any quotes would you like to end? Um, I, just so appreciate, of course, everybody's um, vulnerability always. And yeah, yesterday, um, recording with you was amazing. And he, I, I so agree with your sentiment of owning who you are, being okay with, you know, own your actions. So you know your intent. Um, and as long as your intent is coming from a true and kind place, honor that um you know we don't have to over apologize and i think that being able to share that with others that you know we really are trying to work well with one another um and continue to show up for one another is just such an important piece of that that we really are genuinely um continuously and i think that rooms like this prove that that we are we are consistent in that message that we're going to work through that. Um, and it's that commitment to one another, I think, that um, really shows that, that level of leadership that we all share. And thank you so much for bringing up that I have an event coming. So this Wednesday, um, it's going to be at 4 o'clock Central Time. Uh, I'll be posting about it. I did include a link in a post that I did yesterday. Um, it, the registration is still a little bit messed up. I did find a button, but it's not working quite right. Um, so hopefully, um, so you might be able to help me with it, but it's around helping, um, leaders gain, um, navigate the complexities around scaling up. So you can get some cohesion with your high performing teams, get you some actionable insights, um, practical tips for you to implement immediately if you're having any kind of um, issues with your teams meeting your strategic goals. Thank please so send much. me a DM. Please send me a DM with a link. Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. Um, Louis, I want to bring you up. How, and unfortunately, we are at the end. I just want to remind everybody who wants to share their thoughts and amplify your message to the world, please put it on the comments. I'm going to give you guys until about, I have to edit it. So I say 3 p.m., so 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 six hours in six hours i whatever that's posted on the comment section is going to be read uh if you're okay with it go ahead and tell me yes you can read this 
on your message. I will read it and put it on the podcast tomorrow. I will send the link to our podcast in this audio room on the business page of LinkedIn because I believe your thoughts, your opinion, your experiences matters to me and to the world. As a global citizen, it's my job to use my platform to amplify your message, especially we're trying to create a group of people who cares about each other and the way we communicate with each other is super important. Sister Danielle, what comes up for you in terms of quotes to end this room today? Thank you, um, Dr. CJ, Sister. Um, my thoughts are, remember that divergent thoughts are opportunities to gain better understanding and an opportunity for collaboration. Um, and echoing what um, I hear as today from, from a lot of leaders was that kindness is free. And no matter if it's a personal or a professional relationship, we can always give that. So thank you all. Love you all. Sending you all um, with love on this beautiful Sunday. Thank you, dear sister. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and end this room. But before I end, I'm going to give you guys a statement. Disagreement is a natural part of dialogue and growth, guys. But disrespect crosses a line that undermines trust and mutual understanding. Let's embrace our differences with respect, fostering a culture where diverse opinions are valued and every voice is heard. I love you guys. Please come back next Sunday. We have great discussions. Thank you for your love, for your patience, and for the share. All right. Remember, if you want me to share your stuff, just put it in the comment section. Bye, everybody. We're going to end it in five, Bye, four. Everyone. Come to my room in three hours, right? Yep. Three hours, what, three and a half hours. Three. Bye. 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 Bye.